What's up guys and welcome back to another episode of Headphones Neil Reviews. I'm your host as always, Headphones Neil, bringing you another hodgepodge episode of stuff I've been watching. Um, and in this case I'm going to have a random Doom mod for gameplay and then a um, review for a vacation that I recently took a couple days off. So didn't really mess too much with the schedule but it did give me a chance to remember a TV show to watch, which I did watch the first episode of last week and then I caught up on the second episode this week. But um, before we jump into all of that, I did want to start off with the usual weekly recap update of the watch through for Ahsoka. So in this case, it's episode or sorry, season one, episode six, far, far away. And they seem to have caught lightning in a bottle twice. So after last week's episode where we had the very good and detailed um, episode with Ahsoka and Anakin um, going to the battle, the Siege of Mandalore, um, their interactions and discussions with each other, a uh, young, uh, live action young Ahsoka and all of that. Um, th with this week's episode, um, we finally make it to the random planet where they believe that Thrawn is hiding. Um, and we get not one, but two reveals in this episode. So the first one is, of course, uh, we get, we finally get the live action Grand Admiral Thrawn. So, um, overall my doubts about the character being in live action were quelled. I really, really enjoyed the performance, the acting, the translation into live action, um, to the point where my main hang up for the character was going to be that he doesn't look quite like Grand Admiral Thrawn, but seeing him in live action, speaking, talking, interacting, and all of that, um, I'm taking that back. I actually really enjoyed it. They did a really good job. They understand the importance of the character in the Star Wars Expanded Universe. And um, so overall, if you had doubts, then this should take care of all of that. And I did want to change my um, reveals for this episode from two to three, because I just remembered off the top of my head that there is a third re revelation. So besides Thrawn, the next big revelation in this episode is that um, on this planet, we also get the introduction to the live action version of um, Ezra, to, um, which overall it was good because the voice was there, the acting was there, but the the actor portraying him looked a lot like um, an Aladdin character. So, but granted for me, it's like, okay, well, my memory of him from Rebels is that he has a smooth, slick hair. He's a little bit younger, but in this case, they've been living on this random planet. He's been living out in the wild, basically like the camping version of it. So he doesn't have the luxuries of home. So the character actually worked really well. So I enjoyed it. I enjoyed the interaction with him and Sabine. They're kind of still picking up from where they left off um, before he disappeared. So it was good. Um, the turtle creatures were a little bit strange, but they fit in nicely to into the um, environment for Star Wars, so I can't wait to see what they do in the next two episodes. But overall, very very well done. Um, having that Star Destroyer show up over the platform was a very nice touch, so very well done. I also can't wait to see more of those stormtroopers that are following Thrawn, whether they're zombies, live action, or like actual stormtroopers continuing to be clones of. Django and or just regular stormtroopers and all of that um i can't wait to see more but overall a very good episode so i can't wait to see how they or when the lady brings that information about anakin to thrawn how they introduce all of that information and then the final um introduction in this episode was live action night sisters so if you remember from uh, the Clone Wars animated sister series, you have 
mother tells in so they actually translated those her character model into live action for the night mothers here there's three of them they live on this um distant planet where that where it used to be a thriving uh world and planet and all of that so i thought they did a good job there and what i learned about after the fact is that the one in the middle was played by actress claudia black so if you know her or if you don't know her she was in farscape and stargate sg1 so definite big um, sci-fi chops there so now she's um added star wars to the, her list of sci-fi shows so um i couldn't make her out i even looked at the pictures after the fact and i still couldn't tell it was her but um so i'm taking basically everyone's word for it but it was good that or just an interesting bit of tidbit note there so that's all there is to talk about for this episode. Now that we've introduced Thrawn and Ezra, we can uh, round out the plot for what's going to happen. Essentially, they're either going to go back to the main, right there, to the known galaxy, Star Wars galaxy, or um, Thrawn's going to get stuck and Ezra's going to stay, or Thrawn's going to get stuck and Ezra and everyone else are going to return. We'll see, I hope, how um, Thrawn interacts with Ahsoka and all of that. So. Um, can't wait to see what happens in the next couple of weeks. So with that being said, um, the show that returned that I didn't, that I forgot about over the weekend was The Walking Dead, Daryl Dixon, which started a couple weeks ago. So we do have a couple of episodes under our belt. Um, this show takes place in, for the majority in France. So Daryl had a fight or issue with the Commonwealth. He was on a boat, he lands in France, and now he's dealing with new characters. He find, he ends up in a um, church with some nuns who believe some kid is a messiah. So we'll see how all of this plays out. But um, so far, it's actually very interesting. A lot of it draws its parallels, parallels or a lot of it can be drawn in parallel to what happened with the uh, Rick storyline in The Walking Dead Season 1. Um, Rick wakes up in a world overrun by zombies. Uh, Daryl's waking up in France, doesn't know anything or any or about what's going anyone or about anything that's going on. Um, Rick meets up with a group of people and they have to get to um, the CDC for the cure to figure out what's going on. In this case, with Daryl, he has to deal with this messiah who. Um, I guess in the second episode, um, it's a miraculous birth because his the kid's uh, mom gets bitten, turns into a uh, zombie, has to go through a C-section and is still born. So it's a whole miraculous birth, which is why I can see why they think he's a messiah. So we'll see how that all plays out. Or maybe he has a special immunity to the um, zombie um, plague or the apocalypse. So the reason he's so special and they need to get to this place is to figure that that place that they need to go to who will fig can try and figure out the cure um that's all speculation on my part but kind of the parallels there so because the season is still ongoing and we have a couple of episodes only uh we'll see how it ends but overall it's very intriguing i can't wait to see how they deal with um daryl dixon being in france um and then as far as the usual weekly update i'm still watching stargate sg1 i'm done with season seven and now into season eight um, we have Jack O'Neill being promoted to general, um, General Hammond becoming a higher general and going to Washington, um, Captain Carter, or Major Carter is now Colonel Carter, so we have that shakeup going on, uh, Jack O'Neill hating command and dealing with all that, um, and then just general, now it's a lot, still a lot of, you know, politics and dealing with the, uh, Gould, I think Anubis has now been defeated, or at least Ball is taking taking over his forces and is trying to conquer all the ghouls. So dealing with that story arc, but over um, there's that it's still they haven't really touched too much on the ongoing saga with the J Jafar rebellion. So there's still that. Um, there's now talks about Atlantis that are starting up. So that's going to be the finale to season eight. So a lot of change up there, and they're I think they rounded out the uh, Replicator story arc as well as far as defeating fifth and then the copy of uh, Carter is now out on, out in the universe on her own so uh, we'll see with um, how all of that plays out over the next couple of seasons 
Now, last weekend, um, I did have a chance to take a couple days off. So, um, if you follow along the blo at, the, at the blog at PatelN01.com or you subscribe to the YouTube channel at PatelN01, you saw a post go up with some pictures and videos from my trip to Mammoth. Um, we just want to take a couple of days off and uh, relax. Uh, the weather was nice. Uh, fall colors are not quite there, but a lot of the locations were still pretty good to visit. It was pretty quiet, nice for hikes and seeing the sights. And like I said, it's just basically to go and relax and just visit the town without having to deal with snow, too many people and all of that. And overall, um, it is a good time to go. Um, I will say that a good time to go is probably more in October if you want to check out the fall colors. Um, the, in September, it's still a little bit early, so you don't get too much of the change, but the weather is nice. It's, even though it was in the mid 70s to low 80s, um, it was sunny and warm, but by the evening it does get cold, so there is that. But if you want to check out the fall colors, I recommend going closer to the end of September or well into October. Um, but that being said, um, if you go in like um, August or September, you still get you know clear skies. So a lot of the lakes, you do get good shots. Like a Convict Lake, the water is very clear, um, so you can check out that. You know, it's about a mile, a couple mile hike there. If you stay at Juniper Lodge, you get a good view of the mountains. Um, and if it's a good, if you catch it at the right time, you get a good sunset. Uh, same thing with if you go to like Mono Lake to check out the Tufa there the salt or the deposits that are there from draining the lake um you know from the freeway it doesn't look like there's much but once you get close up it's nice to see them coming out of the water um and that's also a nice couple mile hike by the water if it's clear then you get a good uh, nice picturesque views there um, you still have snow capped mountains not too much snow but enough to take some good photos um going up to the top of mammoth mountain is good on the gondola um, it's about a 20, I think I want to say it's like a 20 minute or so ride each way. You can stop at the top to get views of the surrounding areas. So it's one of those things that's probably, like I said, prettier in October for fall, or if you want to just go in the snow and see the snow capped mountains from, or in winter, then it's good there. But if you want just clear skies and clean air, then you can go in, you know, August or September. Um, and then same thing with like the Twin Lakes area or taking the trolley to, go around town go to the various lakes and that's also a good thing to do if you don't want to drive um the trolley stop has a good pickup point at the village for that or if you're staying in one of the hotels check out the trolley routes so you can get around town that way so um it's a nice area it's, uh very relaxing not a whole lot to do uh the village has a few restaurants and stuff to um eat at um the old new york deli is good for lunch and then there's a coffee shop that's good for breakfast for dinner the we didn't have dinner there just because they looked okay as far as reviews and stuff but we did find a place for pizza and pasta called giovanni's pizza which is down the street a little bit but they have really good um like a pizza and pasta the crust is good sauce is good pasta sauce is good as well so um i definitely check recommend checking that place out it has good ratings um there's a good breakfast place also called um, Living Well or something like that, or Good Eats Cafe or something like that, which is in that area as well. Not in the village, but down the street um, as well a little bit. But if you check that place out, they're good for breakfast and lunch. So good sized portions for both. Uh, very friendly staff. It looks like it's in a random parking lot, but it's actually a very good place there's a lot of good traffic that's coming in and out so you can tell that people like it as well so um there is that um so that's all i really wanted to share was if you want to go to mammoth you know in the summer spring fall times outside of winter then it is a good place to visit if you want a couple of days off just to relax go for some hikes um there's that so we we ended up going on saturday coming back on tuesday um, Saturday we did stop at Convict Lake, we didn't do much else, and then we spent time at Mono Lake going on the gondola, and a few other random places on uh, Sunday and Monday. We didn't do much on Tuesday either, so um, depending on how much you want to do, I would recommend three to four days. Three days it should be enough as well, because by Monday the, stuff, the hikes and stuff that we went on were okay to go to, so if you want to just go to, you know, um, 
convict and mono lakes uh, take the trolley around go on the gondola then one to two days should or sorry two to three days should be enough depending on when you get there um, because for example the gondola does stop giving rides around 4 30 so you do have to make it back for that the trolley goes around i think throughout the days and stuff so you do have to check the times for all that but um if you want the trolley you know to go to the very stop at the various lakes and stuff then you do need some time for that um driving out to mono lake does take time because there you need a good um i would say probably a good, at least around a half an hour or so each way to drive there if you're staying in mammoth and then the time to hike down to the um, lake bed, the beach area, and check it out and walk around. Um, you need time for that. Um, and this also doesn't um, take into account things like if you want to check out Tioga Pass in, to, on the road to Yosemite, if you want to check out the views there, um, or go to Yosemite as well. So um, if you do want to go to Yosemite, you would need a few extra days as well. So for things like that, once you start adding, you know, lakes and hikes and things like that, then it would expand into a week but if you just have a couple of days like for some example if you do have three days then spending time in town should be good enough um so with that being said to round out this particular episode um in looking for some video games to play i didn't see any new recent updates to knights of the old republic so i do still need to check to see if that game is working again on android um i did start looking up old west theme mods for um doom and i found one called a fistful of doom which is a doom 2 mod that takes a that overhauls the look and feel of um the doom guys weapons as well as a, uh, create a couple of maps change up the enemies to create a couple of levels as if you were in an old west town it draws its inspiration from a fistful of dollars the clinton clint eastwood movie so you're in an old west town there's an okay the okay corral you go into the saloon and the general shop and things like that um and then you fight off the bad guys the bandits and things like that to make your way to town find the keys and complete the level so not a whole lot in the mod um so it's not like a mega wad that it's a fully realized you know three episode game with a bunch of levels in it it's just two levels that you finish the first level in town and then the second one you go down to i guess mexico and you have to find out fight off bandits in a church and in different buildings and stuff and then the exit find the key and exit through the church so um it is a fun couple of levels um i did enjoy it i don't it doesn't look like it's been updated in some time but it is worth checking out if you want to get into the gameplay style of you know gz doom or doom in, in general then it is a good couple of episode um it's a good couple episode map to check out or a wad to check out um and that's really all there is to say i mean they uh, changed they have the additional um music and layout and look and feel and enemies and all that so recommend checking it out it you can have it play um done if it depends on how good you are for me i spent a lot of time running around and adjusting settings and stuff but i figured if you have you know 20 or 30 minutes then you can get through both levels so it's really easy um there's also a couple of follow-up levels that don't really have much to do with the actual game they keep the music and weapons and stuff going and some enemies but um they have a couple of they're not really secret levels as well but you can keep playing it's like they introduce the characters into or the character models for the old west into regular doom levels so it's kind of weird um so you don't necessarily have to play those but if you want to keep going you can i guess <laughs> I got into the fourth level, so I assume that that's it, but um, I kind of stopped there, so I don't know if there's any more, but um, as far as A Fistful of Doom goes, it's a good couple of levels to play through, so um, I recommend it. It's fun. It's good to even once you kill off all the enemies, um, you can just wander around, around town if you want. Um, the second level is also pretty nifty because they remap the uh, Demon Spectre into um raising the dead um um cowboys that you kill in the cemetery so you have to fight those off too so there's a couple of nifty little tricks in there the main downside is that the key colors don't really correspond to anything so even though you get so they're all silver keys so even if you get the key that you think you need it may not be the one you need for the right color door so you have to go find the other one so or the second one things like that so something to pay attention to there but 
in general, it's a mod that works. So that's all there is for this particular episode. So if you have any questions, comments, feedback, or anything like that, you can uh, comment on the post by visiting one of the social media sites on the website at headphonesneal.reviews. Um, or you can also find past episodes, subscription links, uh, ways to support the show and all of that good stuff. If you want um, an ad-free version of the show as well as early access to the audio version and a link to the video version, that's up on the Patreon at patreon.com slash pateln01. And um, something I forgot to mention last week is that I am now on uh, Blue Sky as well, so I'm sorry to post um there as well so if you want to check it out the link is already up on the website um i think i got whatever blue skies link shortener is slash patel n01 but like i said the website has the link for that um, to get to the right page but um i thought i would share that this time around um but that is all for this particular episode thanks for tuning in and until next time